You can't love God. You can't love God. I'm telling you, if you don't love God in a whole way, with all, with all, with all, I'm telling you, your love is perverted. What you mean? I'm telling you, you have room to hate somebody. You have room to, to not forgive someone. You have room for a little piece of malice. Are you all hearing what I'm telling you now? If it's not with all, see, because when it's with all, it puts you in the perfect state. unto the Lord, for He is good, and His mercies endure us forever. Welcome to Faith Touch. I am indeed delighted and thankful that you have taken the time to join us today. Apostle's message today is from the declaration, This year I will exhibit kingdom love. It is not good to love just in word or speech. We need to show our love for our neighbors in truth, and action. In so doing, we also demonstrate our love for God and that our faith in Christ Jesus is alive. Listen and be blessed. This is the year more than ever that we be the church more than just doing church. Did y'all just hear what I said? God is calling us in this year to be the church if we're going to advance the kingdom of God. So the new perspective is, I'm going to be more than do. I'm going to be. Anybody could put on a show. Are you all here? But not everybody can be. Not anybody can be the part. So what God wants us to do, he says, I want you to be a part of the vision that I have for the world. Listen, my brothers and sisters. God wants us to be a, a part of that vision because that's his whole purpose. His desire is that none would be lost. God's desire is that none would perish. Why? Because... John 3 and 16 tells us why. As we talk about love. For God so loved the world. So loved the world. See now, this is where we're going to talk about kingdom love. For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave his only begotten son. For what reason? That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Which tells me that if we do not believe, if we do not believe in the love that God has offers, offered to us, you can simply perish. You can be the best person in the world, but you're in perishing position. Are you all in the room? You are in perishing position if you do not believe. But it's God's love that offers, offers us the opportunity, brothers and sisters, to not perish. Now, I want to tell you something. There's two kinds of perishing that happens. And that's the perishing that happens in this physical life. But there is a greater perishing that will happen. And that is an eternal perishing. Where you and I are cut off from the, from the very blessings of God that we enjoy on earth. And we are hushed into a 
what uh, the scripture calls a lake of fire. Where the Bible says the, 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 the worm does not die. The worm does not die. Neither is the fire quenched. The fire does not go out. And the worm that is assigned to eat the body of those who rebel against the order of God. The worm doesn't die. Oh my God. And worst of all, brothers and sisters, even though you are assigned to, to death, you do not die. You are, you are dead because you are separated from God, but you are in eternal punishment. But God's love for us, brothers and sisters, goes beyond this. And God says, even though this is what I have put in motion for those who rebelled against the order of God, he says, I've also put something else in motion. What I put in motion is my love for those who would receive my redemption, those who would receive my, my sacrifice. And so we, we, we want to talk about this uh, a little bit more. I just showed us something there in, in the John 3 and 16. Go to verse 17. And, and, and John 17, uh, verse 17 is going to affirm what I just said. For God did not send his son into the world to do what? To condemn the world. But that the world through him might be what? Saved. So, brothers and sisters, uh, as we advance the kingdom of God this year, it has to be, my brothers and sisters, it has to be through the spirit and the fruit of love. Two things I said, the spirit and the fruit of love. Now, last month declaration says, I will be a what? Fruitful branch for the kingdom of God, for the glory of God. I will be a fruitful branch for the glory of God. Now, out of that branch, brothers and sisters, as I am fruitful, uh, I, I, the, the declaration card, if you pay attention to it, you will see now that the declaration card is going to unveil for the rest of the year. The, the declaration card is going to unveil uh, the fruit of the Spirit for us. All right? And the first one is love. The first one is love. Okay? Now, make no mistake about it. Everything here is strategic. Everything that's happening in these declarations is strategic, y'all. Because God is trying to get us, brothers and sisters, to be who he has called us to be. I don't know about you, but... You know, uh, you see, especially in the Pentecostal um, arena, we equate um, holiness and anointing with how much we shout. But God wants to move us, brothers and sisters, from just being emotional to being a people who are truly manifesting his power. And one of the ways that we manifest his power, brothers and sisters, is in submission to the Holy Spirit. When we submit ourselves to the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit then is allowed to produce in us nine fruit, not fruits, nine fruit, my brothers and sisters. And one of them is love. Why is it not fruits? Because, uh, brothers and sisters, the fruit is a whole. The fruit is a whole. But in this one fruit, in this one fruit, there is nine characteristics that God wants us to walk in. And it's amazing that the first one is love. And when I examined this, when I examined this, uh, I, was, I, was very, I was very much... I was very much intrigued. I was very much motivated. And I had a revelation of understanding that has broke into my life. Because I recognize that, brothers and sisters, uh, I'm going to show you some things right now. That there is a reason why love is the first one. I, I, it's amazing. And, it's, and it's, there is a reason why love is the first fruit of the Spirit. Let's, let me show you why. I want you to go to, uh, to Deuteronomy chapter 6. And I'm going to show you something, brothers and sisters, parallel to the fruit. <laughs> Y'all, uh, now watch this. 
uh, I want you to go to verse number, let's go to verse number four, because I don't have time to go through all of them. Let's go to verse number four, all right? Everybody read. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Okay? All right, let's go to verse number five. You shall what? Love the Lord your God with what? All your heart, with all your soul, and with all your what? Strength. Now, let, let me um, go to verse number six. I think I can use just that. Uh, uh, read what it says. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. Okay, now the first thing that God says um, to the children of Israel through Moses is God says, I want you to love. He says, I want you to love, my brothers and sisters, I want you to love, go back to verse number five, I want you to love God with all your heart with all your soul and with all your strength. Wow. God says, I want your love to be I want your love to be out of a revelation of understanding that it's not divided. Brothers and sisters, what the world needs today is love. Hit your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need love. Oh, Lord, y'all ain't saying that like a minute. Ain't nobody up in here need love. Hit your neighbor and say, neighbor, you need love. But in order, in order for you to love, in order for you to love, brothers and sisters, you've got to first follow what God says. God says, this is how you start with love. This is a, he says, you shall love the Lord your God. How? With all your heart. I, I, I want to help us because, uh, brothers and sisters, you can't advance the kingdom this year if you're loving God halfway. Are you all in this room? You can't, you can't advance the kingdom. You can't even advance yourself if you're loving God halfway. This is why God says your love for me has got to be with all. It has to be from a revelation of all. And some of us got some stuff in the way and talking, but we love God. Lord, you know I love you. You better shut up. Because you got to get a revelation of what it means to love God. And God says, with all your heart. Your heart cannot be divided while you're talking about, God, I love you. See, that's why we got to be careful about these songs we sing. If we ain't mean what we singing. You got to have an understanding of what you're singing. I love you, Lord. <laughs> Yeah? Are you loving him with all your heart? Because if you're not loving him with all your heart, your love is perverted. Your love is lukewarm. And if you're not loving him with all your heart, brothers and sisters, I want to suggest something to you. And I'm going to prove this again. If you're not loving him with all your heart, your love is perverted. And your love is lukewarm. Pastor, what you're saying? I'm saying, brothers and sisters, see, loving God is not your way. God says, I want a complete, I want a complete breakout of who you are. Not any part of you are going to be left undone when, if you're going to love me. And there's the part, because some of us don't understand that we, we, we're trying to love we're loving God with all our heart, but our soul. Our soul is still somewhere else. And that's why it's so easy to sin against God. The soul that sinned shall surely die. Are you all in the room? Huh? Some of us love God, but we ain't loving God with all our strength. We're giving it to somebody else or to something else. And then we wait until we're ready to go to the grave. And now we want to love God. God say, I want you to, he, he, that's, and why does he say with all your strength? And he really is talking about your physical right here. God says, I want you to give me all of you while you're, while you're in your youth. Start from the days of your youth. Are you all here? God, God is very specific about his love for you. Because in, until you, if 
Brothers and sisters, when you read John 3 and 16, you see how God's love is so perfect. Now, let me show you uh, that, that, that Jesus says these same words again. I could take you to the book of uh, Mark chapter 12. Go to Mark chapter 12. And verse, I want you to go to verse number 29. Go to Mark, go to verse number 29. Everybody read what it says. <laughs> Now here is Jesus, watch this, here is Jesus quoting, quoting the book of Moses. Jesus is quoting the book of Moses, which tells you, he's just telling you, the words that Moses spoke to you are words that came directly from me. Jesus saying, it came directly from me, or it co comes directly from the Father to you, and I'm repeating them, I'm rehearsing them in your ears that nothing has changed. Nothing has changed concerning God's command to you. Now, uh, brothers and sisters, this is going to be important. Because th this question was asked uh, by someone in his midst. Uh, you know, Lord, which is the greatest of the commandments? Tell us. We want to know. And so Jesus answered him and says, the first of all commandments, the first of all commandments is this. He says, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the, the Lord is one. Verse number twenty. 31, 30, sorry, says these words. Read. And you shall what? Love the Lord, your God, with all your what? Heart, with all your what? Soul, with all your mind, and with all your what? Strength. Pause again. Hit your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to love God his way. You can't love God. You can't love God, brothers and sisters, any kind of way. And that's why this month I will exhibit kingdom love. Watch this. The kingdom love that I'm going to exhibit in my life, brothers and sisters, is a kingdom love for God. I'm going to manifest my love for him wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. Not only wholeheartedly, but with my whole soul, with my mind, and with all my strength. Watch. What's that mean, Pastor? That means that some things about my life is going to change as we start hearing words from this month. You're going to hear some word this month. You're going to hear a word from me, from Bishop, from others. You're going to start hearing some word. And what? watch this, brothers and sisters. This ought to transform us in how we walk. Because you can't love God. You can't love God. I'm telling you, if you don't love God in a whole way, with all, with all, with all, I'm telling you, your love is perverted. What you mean? I'm telling you, you have room to hate somebody. You have room to, to not forgive someone. You have room for a little piece of malice. Are you all hearing what I'm telling you now? If it's not with all, see, because when it's with all, it puts you in the perfect state. Jesus says, this is the first commandment. Let's go to verse number 31. And let me show you how important this is. He says, and the second is like it. Hit your neighbor again and say, neighbor, don't back down now. This is what he says. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Loving God puts you in position to love somebody else. Because loving God causes you to love yourself. Because when you love God, you understand, brothers and sisters, how awesome God is that he didn't destroy your little tail. I'm going to help you again. You, you see, because uh, I don't know how the second is like the first commandment. Jesus says the, the second commandment, is on the, he says, is on the same parallel as the first one. He says, you shall love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all your strength. He says, and the second commandment is this. Let me, rep let me rephrase it for you. Just as you love yourself, love your neighbor. So what's missing then? What is he telling you? He is telling you that you can't even love yourself until you love me. Until you love God, you will never know how to love yourself. You only got what I tell. That's why we abuse ourselves. 
Watch, you abuse yourself with thoughts that you are inadequate. You, you abuse yourself with the thoughts of low self-esteem. You abuse yourself with believing that some things are too good for you. Are you all in the room? You abuse yourself with... Come on, I'm talking to us now. We abuse ourselves with believing that God is angry with us, that he is punishing us when it's contrary to John 3 and 16. God loved it. It's contrary to the book of Ephesians, which says that while we were yet sinners, if God was, if God was saving me while I was still punching him, talking about him, y'all ain't hearing me, offending him, he was still saved. How in the world is it that I entertain a thought that just because a whole lot of things going out of order is because God ain't love me? No, you don't love yourself. And because you don't love yourself, I'm sorry, you don't love yourself because you haven't learned yet how to love God. Because when you learn how to love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all, all your soul, there's a revelation that's going to break for it. That God's love for me is not hinged upon who I am. God's love for me is not hinged upon who I am, but who God has called me to be. In other words, God has already looked beyond my fault. Before the foundation of the world, God already looked beyond. Oh, God, I love this. I ain't got time to demonstrate this. Watch this, Kevy. Come here. Come here. Come here one more time. Before the foundation of the world, God so loved me. You know why? Because before the foundation of the world, come on, Kevy, let's walk in heaven. Kevy was in heaven with God. Are you all here? I'm God now. Kevy was in heaven with me. Kevy was already created. He was already in heaven originally with God. Are you all hearing me? Then what God did, and this is what God tells Jeremiah, before I formed you, I knew you. In order to know anybody... All right. Are you all here? They say before, <laughs> and, and the word knew, I knew you. That means I was, I was trying to get to know you. He says, before I formed you. When, when, before I formed you refers to before I brought you into uh, creation, into the atmosphere of earth. He says, I already knew you, brothers and sisters, in that place called heaven. Our original is in heaven. That's why when we pray, Jesus tells us to pray and ask God to release heaven's copy, <laughs> heaven's originality into the copy that's on earth. Mm. Mm. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So here's what happens. He says, while Kevin was in heaven, I loved him. But yes, God also knew. God also knew that he was getting ready to dispatch Kevy into the earth realm. That's when he formed man out of dust. Breed into Kevy, Put him in the earth realm and say, now go into the earth and breed and have dominion. Take control. Mm. Understand my love for Kevy. But God knew that once he dispatched Kevy into the earth realm, something was going to happen. Yes, sir. Are you all hearing me in the Holy Ghost? Yes, and I getting ready to quit on you. Listen to what happens. He knew that when he would... Uh, dispatch Kevy was going to rebel. So the Bible says, before the foundation of the world, he had a discussion with Jesus. God loved you so much that he had a discussion with Jesus before he formed him. The discussion was, Jesus, I want to know, will you go down? I can find nobody, nobody righteous enough that can take the place of you. Will you go? And Jesus told the Father in advance, prepare me a body and I'm going to go. I'm going to go into the earth realm. I'm going to go into the earth realm and fulfill your love for those people. Brothers and sisters. So what happens is that when Kevin got into the earth, brothers and sisters, and he, and he sinned against God. God already had a plan because he so loved the world. He so loved the world. That was everybody. That's who you think is the baddest fellow on the planet. Mm. You know, you think about Hitler and all those Jews that he killed. God loved Hitler. Mm. 
And despite what you think, let me just help you with something. Uh, six million Jews he killed. And I tell you, on Hitler's dying bed, if Hitler say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. I'm going to tell you, ain't no surprise in heaven. On that great getting up morning, Hitler will be coming right up. Y'all ain't heard what I just said. Hitler will be coming right up and sitting in God's presence because God loved Hitler before Hitler did everything that he did. Are you hearing me now? Can you hear me now? God says my love goes beyond what you do in the earth realm. I already love you pre-dated. So all Kevy has to do is now it takes Kevy to come back in agreement with what God has already pre-done. I pray this message has blessed your heart. For a copy of this message in its entirety, please call our media ministry. 341-0502 and place your order today. Neighbors and friends, I want to take this opportunity to invite you to our 8 a.m. Morning Glory service and our 10.30 a.m. Divine Worship service every Sunday morning right here in the sanctuary. I also want to let you know that this entire month of June, we will be honoring and celebrating men. So join us in the 8 a.m. or and the 10.30 a.m. service. Until next time, this is our year of kingdom expectations and manifestation. Be blessed. Some people will determine that you cannot, watch this, that you will not amount to anything. Some people will look at your past and decree and declare, look here, it's all over. And that's why, listen, I want y'all to hear me. No matter how, how hard things look, no matter how terrible things are in the lives of people, keep speaking life over them. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? Speak life over your children. Speak life over your family. Speak life over your spouse. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Because God's intention for every man is for that man to walk out his purpose. The Marriage on Purpose series by Apostle gives us the tools and resources needed to make our marriage relationship stronger, sweeter, and secure. If a married couple hopes to find the joy and happiness that God intended, each must apply the scriptural principles God gave to fulfill his design for unity and intimacy. Watch this. So if he can mess up your marriage, his plans is he takes your worship. If he can create an imbalance in your life, then ultimately God cannot get what God is looking for. The Marriage on Purpose teaching is a 12-part series available on CD or DVD. To order, call us at 242-341-0502 or 954-381-5204. Or you may visit our website at www.ufmi.org and purchase your copy of this powerful teaching resource today. Thank you for listening to our program today. For prayer, counseling, or encouragement, please call us, 341-0502. Send us an email, united.faith at yahoo.com. Or like us on Facebook, United Faith Ministries International. We would be delighted to hear from you. Wishing to join us? Meet us at our sanctuary at number 126 Fire Trail Road East every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. for our morning glory worship service and 10.30 a.m. for our divine worship service. For all other service times and broadcast schedules, please visit our website, www.ufmi.org. On behalf of our senior pastor, Apostle Falman Ferguson, and the family of United Faith Ministries International, thank you for sharing with us. Join us next week right here on this station, and may the Word of God richly dwell in you.